All right, here I have a, one of my oldest books in my collection. I bought this thing shortly after uh, hearing about the Bible version issue. This thing's probably about eight or nine years old. I've had this and, and uh, just haven't had the time to, to really put it up yet. This is by doc, Dr. Jack Mormon. Um, and basically it's a closer look at the early manuscripts in the authorized version. Okay, one of the big attacks that you're going to hear about the King James Bible is that it is based on uh, late manuscripts. Well, I'd like to point out the fact that a lot of that is true. A lot of the manuscripts that underlie the King James Version are quote-unquote late. In other words, they're, they're uh, newer in their time. In other words, they're not written in the 3rd or 4th century. They're, a lot of them will be, you know, 1000 or 1100 AD or something in that time period. Now, let's just think about that from a common sense point of view very quickly here. I'll show you some of this here uh, as we continue, but I'll just put it there so you don't get the glare. Here I have a King James Bible. This, is, this thing I really don't even use other than just for doing videos, so it's in pretty good shape. But if this was my Bible that I carry all the time, and I've shown my Bible in another video, uh, and it's starting to come apart up here and, and starting to rip. You know why? Because I use it. So, think about that. The reason that there aren't many old manuscripts that underlie the receptus type of texts is because they were being used. The reason the Catholic Church has such old manuscripts is because they weren't being used very much. But this thing here, I, I can't go into the whole thing. I'm not going to go over every single little aspect of it. But the fact of the matter is that many of the ancient manuscripts do contain Textus Receptus type of readings. And here, let me zoom in a little bit. Here we have the authorized version and the NIV readings. Um, and you can see here the thing of the firstborn son. Okay. The NIV and the Catholic Bibles, they take out the word firstborn. They want Mary to be a perpetual virgin, so they take out firstborn. And of course you see their authority for it here is Aleph, Codex Sinaiticus there, Codex Vaticanus, the B, and then a couple others that have authority for that. But then over here you have these Greek manuscripts down through here that do contain the word firstborn. And many of them are older manuscripts. Okay? So, I mean, this is very, very technical stuff. Most people are not going to be interested in this. I mean, this is pretty technical. This isn't some kind of a light reading type of a thing. But uh, many of the scriptures, you'll see the manuscript support for it right here. And a lot of them are older. Okay? And uh, zoom back out here a little bit. I mean, you can just see there are many, many, many of them. You know, it goes basically through the whole New Testament. I mean, you know, like I said, I can't go through the whole thing. If you are interested in this information, I'm going to put links in the description area down below uh, this video telling you where you can pick up a copy of this thing if you want to have all the information um, to refute these people. Here's one of the famous ones. I'll show this quick here. Acts chapter 8, verse 37. The NIV takes it out. There it is in the King James Bible. And you can see the manuscripts which have removed this verse. But then you can see some of the older ones here. And here he says about this verse is cited by uh, Ire Irenaeus, or Irenaeus, however you want to say that, 178 A.D., Tertullian, 220 A.D., and Cyprian, 258 A.D. Okay? Now, I want to show you another one. There you have the early manuscripts in the authorized version. Here we have another one by Dr. Jack Mormon. Early Church Fathers and the Authorized Version by Dr. Jack Mormon. Now, let me just say this. He's not promoting the writings of the early church fathers. They were heretics many times. That's not what this is about. This is not a suggestion that you, you should study the early church fathers and really learn from them or anything. 
don't waste your time on early church fathers. But what this is intended to show is the fact that these verses, that the new versionists, they say, well, they were added, you know, the Lucian recension and all this other stuff. They were added to the King James Bible. The verses that the NIV takes out, they were added to the King James Bible. There are no early witnesses to them. That's a lie. Anybody tells you that, they're lying to you. Okay, let me show you here. We'll zoom in here to this. Distinctly Byzantine. It says here, the early fathers are now called to vote on 149 passages that affect the doctrinal heart of Scripture. Bear in mind that each instance the AV and that in, in each instance the AV reading is opposed by a left and B. There you have your two, when you read in your footnotes in your new version, they'll say the two oldest and best manuscripts. That's what they're referring to. A left being the Codex Sinaiticus, B being Codex Vaticanus. Okay? Therefore, textual criticism would generally have to agree that these 149 AV readings are what they term distinctly Byzantine. Okay, they don't appear in Aleph and B, but they appear in Receptus type manuscripts. And consider also that for the past 100 years, they have told us that few, if any, of these readings are found in the writings of the early fathers. Okay? And here we have a quote by D.A. Carson in the King James Version debate, Grand Rapids Baker Book House, 1979, page 47. I'll say more about him in a minute. He says here, the anti nicaean fathers unambiguously cited every text type except the Byzantine. He lied. And I'm going to show you here, he, Dr. Jack Mormon, shows and proves that D.A. Carson lied. And I have in my, in my video from NIV to KJV, I have D.A. Carson lying about the Today's New International Version. He says that it's the most, one of the most accurate translations ever and, and everything. He totally lied to people. A lot of these guys will lie without even thinking about it. It says here, when seminary teachers as Carson undermine faith in the Standard Bible by making this kind of statement, have they taken the time to verify their sources? No. The material in this digest has been presented plainly. It can be checked. It can be compared with other editions if any can show using the same fathers on the same passages that this two-third to one advantage to the traditional text can be overturned. I would be glad to see the evidence. Okay? Um, now, what he's talking about here is when you read in the writings of the early church fathers, a lot of times they'll refer to scripture and they'll say, you know, the Bible says in such and such or whatever. It'd be kind of like somebody, you know, 2,000 years from now listening to a sermon from a preacher today. Now, the verses that you would quote would prove what kind of Bible was around at the time that you were making the sermon. And the fact is that two-thirds of the scripture quotations line up with the Textus Receptus, the traditional or Byzantine type text, and only one-third line up with the Alexandrian text. So these people come out and they say that there were no early church, or, you know, there were no early manuscripts of the received text, it was written later. They're lying to you. Even though these church father guys were her or heretical in many of their teachings, many of their beliefs, the fact is they were still quoting and citing verses which had been taken out of the Alexandrian. And they were quoting the traditional text type readings more than the Alexandrian. Very interesting. And here again, 149 doctrinal passages. I can't possibly cover all of this. Um, and here I'll just go, I'll flip forward. Uh, Here's one of the ones that's a, one of the controversial passages. Uh, Mark 9.44, okay, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Quoted by Tatian, quoted by Gregory of, this looks like Nazian, <laughs> um, but it's quoted by these two guys right here. Tatian's Diatessaron, right there. So it was quoted, it was around uh, before a lot of the 
um, Alexandrian type manuscripts were around. We're going to go back here to the passage I talked about earlier. Uh, where are we at here? Acts chapter 8 and verse 37. There you have NIV on this column here and the King James, the authorized version on the left column. Acts 8.37, right there, gone. Let me zoom in here a little bit. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Irenaeus, okay, second century. Against heresies, the believing eunuch himself said, I believe Jesus Christ to be the Son of God. So in his writings, he's referring to this passage, verse 37. Cyprian, then said Philip, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. He's quoting part of Acts 8.37. Okay? Life of Cyprian, uh, Pontius here, the eunuch, is described as at once baptized by Philip because he believed with his whole heart. Now he's not quoting the scripture, but he's referring to this verse which the Alexandrian camp, they lie, and they say that this was added centuries later. Well, if it was added centuries later, wasn't around in the early manuscripts, then why are these guys quoting it? See? See the deception? So there you have it. Two excellent resources, very, you know, you want scholarship, you want uh, difficulty and things like that, and, and you know, technical details, right here you have it from a King James Bible believer, Dr. Jack Mormon. It's not Gail Ripplinger or Peter Ruckman or whatever, you can't demonize him, all right? You know, I'm sure somebody could lie about him, come up with things or something like that, you know, but the fact is, this is work right here that cannot be just brushed under the rug. This is the kind of thing that the Alexandrian perverts out there that defend the new versions, they don't want you to know about this type of information. You see, I've, I've been in this game, if you will, for a long time now, and I know how they play the game. You see, they'll come out and most people are quite ignorant of the Bible version issue, and the new version scholars, those people, they will play on that ignorance, and they'll lie to you hoping that you don't know how to answer them. They'll say the King James Bible is not accurate to the Greek text. Now that's enough for most people right there. They go, really? And in their minds they think the Greek text must be the originals. And so that's enough for most people. But occasionally you'll get somebody that will say, well, which Greek text? There are two of them, essentially. And then the New Version scholar goes, oh, we have somebody that knows a little bit here. Um, well, the King James Bible is based on relatively few late manuscripts. And then, and then the, uh, most people will drop out there and they'll go, oh, oh, I didn't know that. And then the, when they say that, then the new version pervert goes, oh, yes, you know. Erasmus only had a, a handful of manuscripts when he made his first edition of the Textus Receptus, thereby confusing the person into thinking that Erasmus was the one who wrote the text which the King James is based on. You know, Erasmus just kind of made it up out of thin air. Not true. And it wasn't even Erasmus's text that was used by the translators of the King James. But you see, once the Alexandrian pervert knows that they have somebody that doesn't know that, then they can use it on them. See? But let's say that there's somebody there and they know a little bit better and they'll say, Why didn't, I don't think that that's true. I mean, the Textus Receptus is based on the majority of manuscripts. The Alexandrian pervert goes, Well, yes but uh, they're all late. You know, the earliest manuscripts, the oldest and best manuscripts underlie the new versions. And there's actually no support for many of the readings in the King James Bible. It was added later at the Lucian recension. You know, they come up with this, uh, all these big terms. And again, that's em enough for most people. They kind of quit at that point. And I've had different people write to me and they say, how do you answer these people? And that's great. You know, don't ever feel dumb writing to me and asking me questions. I mean, I understand that there are some real liars out there that undermine the King James Bible. But the fact of the matter is, they want you to believe that King James only people are some kind of a weird cult and we don't have any intelligent people in our ranks. Again, they want to cover up this fact right here. We have scholars that are 
far more intelligent, even from worldly standards. We have scholars that have more brains many times than the New Version people. And they're bringing out works like this. Quotations proving, you know, the early church fathers were quoting Receptus type readings in the second and third century before Vaticanus and Sidney Atticus were even written. And you, a lot of these old manuscripts, a lot of the papyrus fragments have Receptus type readings in them that Vaticanus and Sidney Atticus have taken out. But see, they don't want you to know about this information. This is, you know, forbidden for the new versionist. And these young men that go off to a seminary somewhere and train to get into ministry, they'll not be presented with this. They'll be presented with Alexandrian philosophy. Excuse me, my microphone fell off here. They'll be presented with Alexandrian philosophy and they'll never be shown this. This stuff they won't be taught because it debunks the lies of the Alexandrian cult. Believe me, if you want answers to your questions, the information is out there. Okay, you can study the Bible version issue and you will have answers to your questions. I've never seen any questions not answered. But it still has to come to a point of faith. And all you really need to do, if you're a Christian, is believe this book by faith been around for 400 years now. Don't you think if God didn't want this thing out there, don't you think he would have stopped it before now? I mean, a lot of these new versions, they've come and gone. You know, uh, the American Standard Version went belly up within a few years. It had to be re-brought out as the new American Standard Version. You know, the revised version of 1884, if you want to go to the whole Bible. That thing went belly up. All these new versions, they come out and they don't even make it, most of them don't even make it 20 or 30 years. King James Bible went for 400 years. And it's not because a bunch of mountain hillbillies kept it alive because they were too paranoid to use something else. That isn't it. Some of the greatest Bible teachers, missionaries, scholars, evangelists have used this book. And any real true man of God that really gets into deep Bible study, this is the book that they will recommend. You won't see them recommending an NIV or a Living Bible or the Message. You know, they won't recommend that kind of junk. They know that real, true, strong doctrine comes from here, not from these new versions, you know, these wicked new perversions okay so if you want to study it by all means dig in <laughs> but uh, some of the stuff is very very technical and like I said if you want the answers they're available right there don't fall for this thing that the King James Bible is based on only late manuscripts and there's no early support no proof early proof for the readings of the King James Bible that's a lie okay you want the proof Right there it is. Okay? Some of the stuff you're going to have to study on your own. I can't, you know, do everything for you. All right? It took me a long time to research. It took me a long time to study all these issues. You want to know the truth, it's going to take you a long time too. You can't just rely on teachers and just say, well, I believe what Brian Denlinger believes and what Brian Denlinger teaches. You're going to need to study this stuff for yourself. Okay? But I'm telling you, I did this video to tell you that the proof is out there if you want it. And I'll give you the links to it down there in the description box if you want to get uh, these materials here. There's a lot of very excellent books out there which prove the fact that the King James Bible is the Word of God and superior to all Vatican versions. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. And may the Lord bless you and keep you in His Word until He comes back.